I think it is the best option that the employer can provide. They make you entertain yourself for 225 euros a year, whether you want or not. <laughs> got run over by a truck but i'm not that cool i'm not that valuable employee so they never offered that to me hello internet this is edwina the siberian who's gone international and today i decided to tell about the typical finnish workplace focusing mostly on its perks today in may 2020 a typical finnish workplace looks approximately like this Because, due to quarantine, approximately 1 million people in Finland currently work remotely and half of them do not want to go back to the office, including me to be honest. However, this video is going to be focused on how a typical Finnish workplace operates during the regular times. Let's begin! Okay, a typical working day at the Finnish office. Uh, first, I'll tell you how it is supposed to be happening and how it usually works in the offices in Finland, and then I'll tell you about my case. So, at a typical, typical Finnish office, people tend to show up at 8 a.m. and leave at 4 p.m. At 9 or around that time, people gather at the break area to have a coffee break, which lasts 15 minutes. The lunch usually happens really early in comparison to most countries. By the way, if you're from another country, let me know in the comments at what time do you usually have lunch during your workday. But in Finland, people tend to have lunch at half past 11, 11 or even earlier, which I notice surprises a lot of foreigners or expats who work at my office. Then people go for another coffee break at around 2 or it depends on the office. And that coffee break also lasts for 15 minutes. The majority of people tend to leave at around 4. At 6 p.m. the office is totally empty. And by law, the working day in Finland lasts 7.5 hours. Uh, those 7.5 hours include two 15 minutes long coffee breaks. The lunch is unpaid, so if you do the simple math, if you want to spend only 8 hours at the office, you're supposed to eat your lunch in 30 minutes. If you eat longer, then you just stay a bit longer. So this is a typical working day. You come at 8, you have two coffee breaks which last 15 minutes each, you have one lunch which lasts 30 minutes, and you leave it for. My day is a bit different. I try to make it to the office by 9, but normally I crawl into the office all sleepy at 9.30, sometimes 10. Uh, I'm not a morning person and having a flexible schedule does not help me to convert myself into one. Then I don't take coffee breaks because I prefer to consume my daily 4 liters of coffee at my desk. If I'm feeling sociable and I want to chat with my colleagues, then I join them for lunch at 11.30. But if I have my own food and feeling antisocial, <laughs> then I have lunch at 2 or even later. Normally I cannot inhale my food in 30 minutes, so my lunch normally lasts 40 minutes to an hour. It's not really control at my office, but I think it's fair since I never take the coffee breaks, right? I never leave the office before 5, sometimes 6. There was a couple of times when I stayed until 11 p.m. and once even until 1 a.m., but those are big time exceptions. I never get paid for any overtime that I do, but that's because I work regular hours and if one day I work more than seven and a half hours, those extra hours get saved so I can either leave earlier another day or even take a day off if I've accumulated more than seven and a half hours. I've talked about this system in more details in my video, five things I like about Finland. Let's go. Let's go. Please go watch it. <laughs> but in some jobs, you actually do get paid more than your basic salary if you're doing overtime. Also, if you're a nurse or a doctor or a construction worker or a cashier, and you're asked by your employer to work on a weekend or on a public holiday or on a weekend which is a public holiday, <laughs> then your pay may be double or even triple of your regular hour salary. Which is pretty cool. I think a lot of people actually chase those days. I have a friend who's paid double when she works on Saturday or Sunday. So I think she deliberately does it at least once a month or something like that. My favorite topic, food. Normally, companies also partially cover your lunch expenses and there are several ways to do that. In my company, we have a canteen because we're located in the middle of nowhere. So, in our canteen, one lunch costs, I think, 
The real price is 10 something, but the employee pays only 640 and then the difference is paid by the employer, I guess, once a month in the end of the month or something. Then I have a friend that I envy a lot because she has her lunches at the restaurants every day. And this is the agreement her employer has with them. She can order food for up to 10.7 euros or something like that, but that's fine because all the lunch menus, usually they cost less than 10. So every day she has a great lunch at the restaurant, which is so much better than our canteen food. And in the end of the month, her employer adds approximately 150 euros to her taxable income amount. She doesn't get this 150 euros added to her salary, it's just the additional amount on top of her salary that she has to pay taxes on. And in my opinion, even though you end up paying a bit more in taxes than you would normally do, you know, because Finland has this progressive tax, I think it is the best option that the employer can provide. I choose that over our canteen food any day of the week. Then some companies just have agreements with the nearby restaurants that the restaurants are supposed to give some discounts to their employees and again the employer pays the difference later. And then there are some companies which give out lunch coupons which you basically can use as money to pay for food at a lot of restaurants, most of the restaurants accept them. And the number of those coupons per month and their value depends on your employer and on how lucky you are. On top of lunch coupons, there is also such thing as culture and sports coupons. Basically, your company can give you so-called culture or sport coupons, which you can use to pay for your hobbies. Most museums, gyms, cinemas, swimming pools, theaters, you name it, usually they accept those coupons. And a couple of years ago, my company stopped using the coupons and they just gave out us these cards called Edenred. And once a year, they put approximately 225 euros on a card. I cannot use that card to go grocery shopping or to pay my mortgage, but I've paid with it for my horseback riding courses, for a couple of bouldering sessions, for a couple of visits to the museums, for visits to some public saunas and swimming pools, uh, I think for a theater once, and you know, so on and so on. I tried paying with it for a concert once, but it's not that easy when you try to pay for something in advance online, so that's not really cool. But it's still pretty sweet that they make you entertain yourself for 225 euros a year, whether you want it or not. <laughs> Medicine. Well, Medicine in Finland is kind of free, you pay some small uh, visit fees if you go to the doctor, but the problem is if you want to go to the public doctor, sometimes it takes a while to get a time slot, so many companies actually try to make it easier for you. And I have a friend who can go to the private doctors as much as she can, which is really cool. <laughs> In my company, we have a private doctor as well, but he's like a general practitioner, so we can go to him as much as we want as well. But if you want to have a specialized doctor, then you are allowed to visit him for free only once a year. Then in my company, you can also go to a private dentist, but it's not as easy. Like, first of all, they are not gonna cover you any kind of cosmetic stuff. Then before they start covering your dentist bills, you need to show them the certificate that your teeth are perfectly healthy and there is a limit. They will not cover more than 300 euros a year, I think, which is pretty good because I never managed to reach that limit. The next perk that I personally have, and it's not everywhere, it's just, you know, you might have it or might not, but it's not that rare either. I know a lot of people who have it as well. So if you need to use uh, a cell phone for work, uh, your employer often will give you the device and also the SIM card. And again, you get it kind of for free, but they add a tiny amount to your monthly taxable income. So in my case, I, they add 20 euros and you pay a tiny bit more taxes than you normally would, but it's incomparable to how much money you're saving. Um, I ended up giving up my personal SIM card, so I'm just using my work SIM card. So I don't have any phone bills because they're all paid by my company. And also, 
Well, the selection of phones that they provide is not that great, so I usually prefer to have my own phone, but a couple of months ago my lovely OnePlus 6T got run over by a truck. That's a separate story. But yeah, it got run over by a truck and I decided that I don't want to spend, I don't know, like 700, 800 euros on a new phone now. And I got this guy, it's Samsung A90 or something. I don't like it. OnePlus 6T was so much better even though it was an older model. But I mean, given that I got it for free, I'm not complaining. I will wait until OnePlus will release the next model and then I'm going back. I've heard that it can work the same way with the car. Again, they add some taxable amount to your salary and you get to use the car for free, but I'm not that cool, I'm not that valuable employee, so they never offered that to me. And the last but not least is the length of vacation. I think the only country which can beat Finland in terms of the length of vacation is France, where the vacation can be as long as eight weeks a year. Here I have six weeks. Most of my friends have also six or minimum five. My mom has seven and a half, but that's because she has a lot of years of experience and also she's from an older generation and she for works for a public sector. And I don't think that people from my generation will ever be given seven and a half weeks, but I'm still pretty happy with my six weeks. So, as you can see, the employers try to make working conditions really comfortable for the employees, uh, whether willingly or because they are forced by law and unions. And uh, I honestly think that working conditions is one of the strongest sides that Finland has. So, if you're considering moving here and you're concerned what your working conditions are gonna be like, I'm pretty sure that this is the side that you will actually like and miss if you will move somewhere else later. Please like this video if you found it at least this much entertaining and this much useful. Thank you for watching. This is it for today. I will see you in my next one. Bye!